How's it going? It's Adele from Microzone. How are you doing today? So today, uh, the subject of the video will be UV sterilization. So what is a UV sterilization? It's basically a light bulb uh, that emits UV rays and underneath this light bulb, any pathogens, bacteria, parasite, parasite, eggs, and algae will be destroyed. So how does it work? You have a light bulb inside of a compartment and you can have three ways of shooting at it. It's basically uh, water from your aquarium that would go through the UV light and as it goes through the UV light, it destroys all the pathogens, whether it's algae particles, bacteria or parasite, parasite eggs. Okay, These things are destroyed inside of UV. It also can destroy your eyeballs, so try not to stare into a UV light. If it's a UV light that you usually use inside of a sump, which is just a light bulb that's in a sump or in a container that you want to sterilize, do not stare at it and do not look at it without some proper eye protection. Usually um, you can use like some glasses that they use for laser treatments or things like that, or just UV blocking um, sunglasses or just glasses. Uh, it can be used in line with a filter, so you can have a regular canister filter and in the return you would have the UV uh, plugged into the return pipe and then it would go into your um, tank, so it would go through all the levels of your filtration and lastly come out of the UV. Uh, this method I like if you don't have much water to filtrate, meaning the UV should work at slower pace to give it the time to destroy whatever goes through it. So if you don't have a crazy bio load and you want to use your canister filter to do so, you can put it in line. But if you want your filtration to be optimal and really quick, I do not suggest to put it in line because it will not work as efficiently. It needs slow flow to go through the UV in order for it to destroy properly what you want to destroy. So on that subject, the next best thing is to have a um, pump, like a power head, powering your water from your aquarium or your sump underneath if you have a salt water tank to just run it through the UV light at the pace and rate that you want it to. Basically at the flow that you will set it up. Usually it's not a very strong pump that we use for that to properly make it function. The uh, other alternative is to have a filter, like a canister filter, that offers a UV bulb inside of the canister, which I find really fun. I know that the Sun Sun models do have the UV sterilization inside of the canister, and um, I don't really know of any other canisters that offer it. Maybe the pen plaques or things like that. I would have to research it and insert it somewhere here of the uh, canister filters that do it. But that's a really cool option and I know for a fact, because I went on eBay once looking for that, there's some hang-on filters that also offer the UV bulb in it. And these uh, hang-on filters actually are transparent, so best not to stare at it. Uh, last option of how to sterilize would be the UV bulb straight inside of the sump or of your aquarium. Uh, usually used in saltwater tanks. Um, I don't suggest to put a UV bulb directly into your aquarium because the fish have eyes also and their eyes will get destroyed from the UV. So if you have just a light bulb that you want to sterilize a container, probably like a container where you keep your water that has to go in the tank afterwards and you would just sterilize it, it will do great in sterilizing inside a container or in the sump of your aquarium, but never in the main tank as the fish will go blind. So. So what kind of things do we use the UV for? Um, well, straight quick, now that I think about it, there's a boil water advisory in our area right now, um, close to Montreal. And usually, these boil advisories are for bacteria present in your water. And in this case, E. coli, poo poo in the water. So if you have poop in your water and that made it somehow to your hot water tank, it will stay there probably, you know. Your hot water tank is not boiling water, hence it will not destroy the eucalyptus, so you might want to rinse your hot water tank a few times. But why am I saying that? If you're going to do a water change, okay, and your filtration, well, your home inline water pipes have already been contaminated with E. coli, you might want to use uh, the UV sterilizer to sterilize that water. Either as it comes into your tank, you plug it in line onto your uh, siphon that fills up your water or your hose, 
or you put a UV sterilizer directly in the aquarium to do that or into the reservoir where you pre-mix your water for your salt water tanks. Really, really important to sterilize if you have a boil water advisory. It usually means poo in the water. So if it destroys E. coli, it also destroys all other bacteria. Yes, your good bacteria might be a little bit destroyed, but we're mostly talking about the negative ones. One of these bacteria is also thought to be an algae, but it is not. It's called cyano. Cyanobacteria is a red slime we usually find in saltwater tanks. Mind you, it can also be present in freshwater tanks and have certain variations of colors. Sometimes I've seen it very green and slimy and sometimes it was just pure red. That's the variations in freshwater and in saltwater it's usually just slime. You know what? It differentiates from the coralline you get because coralline is hard and stays on the rock and cyanobacteria, you could just brush it off like that, it will just fly off. So if you have cyanobacteria in your tank, uh, number one, you should assess why you have it there. Either your water source is bad, you have too many nutrients or it came on the rocks and now you're just feeding it. Sometimes a lack of flow will also make the cyanobacteria grow because flow will blow it away. And if you don't have enough flow, well, it will just spread onto your rocks and onto your substrate. So you will need a UV sterilizer, um, depending on the size tank uh, that you have. I think they have the 16 and the 32 size regular ones for the regular UV sterilization. Unless you have a UV sterilizer that requires a specific bulb, like the green killing machine that you need to buy the actual compartment. And uh, yeah, that will really take good care of your cyanobacteria. Um, I tested it in one of my client's tanks and I was about to use, you know, that powder that will uh, neutralize the cyano and kill it off. But I don't like to go the chemical route, so I plugged back in the UV sterilizer and I came back two weeks later and it was all gone. So I was super happy that we didn't have to go the chemical way in order to remove the cyano. Um, also, let's see, let's see. Uh, it also destroys algae. Algae, if you have uh, a tank with a lot of phosphates or you're just running a new tank and you have the green water, which is the new tank syndrome, so that will really take care of the green water and make it crystal clear again. It might take up to like three days, depending on how severe your new tank syndrome is. Sometimes new tank syndrome also occurs when you disturb your uh, good beneficial bacteria in your tank when you overclean it, when you overdo your filtration. So you will need um, a UV sterilizer to put that, um, that algae under control and make your water crystal clear again. Um, now, another thing that we don't always uh, think about, I'm gonna have a sip because I don't edit my videos. There's no cuts in them. Give me a second. Another reason to really, really, really use a UV has control of parasites and parasite transmission and eggs of parasites <clears throat> now this will be like maybe anecdotal to you guys but I have a client <clears throat> the first time I went there he had velvet already in the tank and velvet is a salt water disease well it could be in fresh water but in this anecdotal case it was in the salt water aquarium it completely took down all his fish except one so we waited six weeks before adding any more fish there was no UV sterilization, but according to many sources, the parasite will be destroyed in six weeks if you don't add anything else. So we didn't treat the tank and um, we added fish six weeks later. Well, the parasite came back and killed off most of the fish except like three. So um, we decided, okay, let's wait six to eight weeks. This time we waited eight weeks and still like we didn't use like any products or anything because i i know that sometimes in reef tanks it's very hard uh to use products such as um you can use um copper copper uh but it will be absorbed by your live rock making your live rock useless you'll have to completely change your live rocks because it will be absorbed into them and you'll never be able to have inverts of corals or things like that even microorganisms so to this effect, we did not use copper, we did not use the poly medic lab, which is another uh, medication. We just said, okay, we have three fish, we're going to wait eight weeks. 
So on the third time, we waited eight weeks, we re-added some fish. Guess what? The velvet was back and attacked them again. Because as much as you have one or two or three fish, they can still be carriers of it. And even though they have survived it and adapted to that velvet, they're going to still carry it and pass it on. So on the third round, we used a polymedic, a poly Polylab Medic, which is a medication you're supposed to use. We use it by the book, didn't work. We used it like double the dose, didn't work, and the fish just kept dying. Until so I'm like, listen, let's just use like the most, you know, unsought at method and add a UV sterilizer. What do we have to waste? We already lost thousands of dollars worth of saltwater fish. The parasite keeps coming back. Let's just put a damn UV sterilizer and see if it actually will work. And that was eight, nine months ago. And we have a tank full of beautiful fish. We have inverts. We have everything. And it's under control. We never lost a fish. We added some very delicate little fish like Doris, like a blue hippo tank. And he didn't die. He was like small like that. I'll insert a picture of the tank right now. Everything's doing wonderfully. Big anemones. Uh, like it's a proper reef. And UV. That's all it took. And actually the UV, um, it was sold to me like secondhand, so it had a pump way too strong for it. And even with that factor being like a little bit wrong, because that was like my first experiences with UV, it still worked wonderfully, worked magics, and the tank is like saved. So parasite control, I highly, highly uh, suggest it. It will also kill off ick, it will kill off any uh, free swimming parasites, um, Anything that goes through it will be destroyed. So if you set it at a good flow rate, it will destroy whatever you need to destroy. And in that particular case, we had it inside of the sump. Now, I also had the case of uh, uncurable, uncurable, um, what's it called? Um, bacteria. See, I don't end my video, so I have to think of the things on the spot. It was ah, the bacteria that uh, really affects all the fish, makes them breed heavy. Okay, I'll add the name of it after I, 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 I edit the video <laughs> later on. Uh, but anyways, uh, my fish were just dying off like crazy. And later on, I realized that it was coming from my tap water. My hot water was infected with that. I'm still trying to think what the name is. Oh, that blank is annoying me. But yeah, it will basically uh, make your fish breed very heavy after, after the water changes, after I've been using a little bit of hot water because it was the winter. If you look into my uh, videos or when I had the discus and things like that, that's when the bacteria first pop up. And I, I'm pretty sure it was like E. coli or something like that that was in my hot water tank that later on transmuted into the fish bacteria. But anyhow, it's, uh, <laughs> that winter I bought UV sterilizers for all of my tanks. Everyone got UV and haven't seen that thing since. So we nuked that one also. Um, also for, um, it's really, really good for um, green water. That I already said, but if you also have black beard algae, which is also a type of bacteria in fresh water, highly recommend the UV sterilizers. And also for the overall health of your tank, it will destroy any bad bacteria. Um, so that being said, I hope this was very informational for you. I hope you will look into getting a UV sterilizer, whether you have a salt water or a fresh water tank in both. It's really, really useful, very necessary. Make sure to adapt it to um, the stocking you have inside, to the size of the aquarium, to what flow rate you need in it in order for it to be efficient. The slower, the better. But if you have a overstock tank, I suggest not putting it in line with your canister filter. Use a different pump for that just to filtrate it at a different flow rate without impacting your, uh, your filtration. So, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave comments. I love interacting with you guys. Feel free to subscribe. Hit that bell icon to get my latest notifications straight up into your email. And yeah, I'll talk to you soon, guys. Have a wonderful day. Bye.